up everybody Asley here uh, with another touch designer tutorial well, this one is going to be this uh, texture you're seeing in the background which I affectionately call my lake of acid texture um, so uh, let's start this thing from scratch and there we go bye bye all right uh, so we need to start with the noise. Um, let's go ahead and set the resolution to something a little bigger. Uh, depending on whether you have commercial or uh, not, you can do. You can choose whatever resolution you are allowed. I suppose um, we're gonna need a threshold. I know you can type it in, I just I refuse to do it for some reason. Um, okay, we need threshold and then uh, we need a null because that'll be the start of our feedback loop. So let's adjust our noise and get it animated because um, that's going to be the start of this. So we want to drag the period all the way down to zero. We want the amplitude to be, uh, this is just a number I found that looked pretty good, 0 0.071. Um, and we want to leave everything else alone. And then let's make it move. Seconds, abs time dot seconds, and then maybe do uh, times 0.3, I think I probably had it going at. Cool. Um, and then I want to adjust my threshold uh, to about 0.6, somewhere in there. You can play with this to taste. Um, all right, cool. So that is, uh, those are going to be sort of the dots driving the whole feedback system. So from our null here, we need to grab feedback top. And then uh, it's kind of a complex feedback loop, but first let's go ahead and grab the composite that it's going to end on. Let's attach all our wires and drag this back onto our feedback. Uh, and then let's go ahead and drag the keyboard in to uh, pulse that feedback loop so we can reset it by pressing one. All right, cool. Uh, and then let's go ahead and send this out to a null and then I think we're gonna need an RGB key as well. All right, so we'll turn the background on too. Um, all right, so uh, <clears throat> let's get going. So what we have here in the feedback loop is going to be kind of a reaction diffusion uh, system with a couple of extra things thrown into the mix. So we're going to set up just kind of the classic reaction diffusion system here first. Um, so we need a blur and then a second blur coming off of the first blur. Um, and then we're going to take that blur and go up into a displace. Um, and then we're going to connect this to the second input of displace as well and then insert a noise in the middle. All right, bear with me. I'm just building this whole thing and then we're gonna go in and adjust everything uh, once, it, once the structure's there. Okay, so uh, we need to attach this to a composite. And then we need this, uh, is it our first or second blur? It's this first blur come into our composite and then we need to switch the order on those uh, and then we need to set this to be subtract 
Uh, if you've if you've seen my reaction diffusion tutorial or anyone else's for that matter, you've probably seen this setup. Um, all right, uh, let's see what else do we need to uh, knock this thing out. Okay, so we need to connect to that. And then set this to luminance difference. All right, something's happening. We also need a level here. Okay, so let's go through and uh, make some adjustments. Um, oh, we also are going to need another blur in here. Okay, um, sorry, I'm getting lost in the sauce here. I'm just looking at my diagram. Um, I cannot for the life of me remember if we actually had all three of these going into this comp or not. Well, we're going to find out. Let's adjust everything and see how it looks. All right, so this blur uh, is good. We're just going to take the filter size down to six. We're going to do the exact same thing on this blur. Uh, on our displace up here, we're going to drag this all the way down to zero, and then I'm going to use the slider to drag it up to 0 0.004. Let's see here. Uh, we need to adjust our noise. We also need to animate it. Let's do that first. Ebbs time dot seconds going into our z translate uh, multiply that by 0.3 again and then let's make some adjustments to this i'm going to do a period of three i am going to change harmonics to zero and then exponent to 0.65 and turn monochrome off lovely all right, um, blur noise comp blur. Let's set this blur pre shrink is going to be huge. That sort of is what makes this look. So we're going to go to 20 and then 32. This isn't supposed to be connected. Hey, get out of there. Yeah, there we go. All right, that's that's why I was looking weird. Sorry about that. This blur does not go here. It's, it's this. So, um, all right. So we're not seeing much of anything, which is uh, to be expected at this point. Reaction diffusion is a little weird like that. Uh, you have to kind of drive it with... Um, some artificial amplification, if you will. Uh, so I'm going to take this level top that I got here, and I'm going to adjust my brightness to just a little up, 0 0.0 or 1.059 is where I found it to look good. And our gamma is going to be 0.19. Boom! There it is. All right. So now we are starting to actually see uh, the patterns that we were expecting from this. Cool, uh, but we're uh, you know we're still in black and white, um, and what we were looking at before definitely was not. So let's see what can we do with this. So I'm just pulsing the feedback to get that. Um, all right, so to get the uh, to get the colors, everything is uh, after our feedback loop here. Um, first thing I'm going to do to kind of brighten this up a little bit is add an edge top after my comp here. Come on now, there we go. All right, um, and then on our edge, we're going to have a strength of 1.3, and then this. Uh, sort of gives it a reflective or watery look what I'm about to do. So I'm going to jack the sample step size 
way up. So it's going to make this a much less accurate edge. So I have it all the way to 19. And when you set it that far, it almost acts like a display stop where you start seeing elements of other parts of the image under new parts of the image. So it gives it this really uh, nice, nice watery look. Um, and then I'm going to comp that over the image. So we're going to be adding on top of what's already there uh, rather than just creating edges. Okay. Um, and then the other two things that we use to get the look are just bloom and RGBA delay, and those are kind of uh, to taste. So we'll drag those on there, and I'll get them to where I like them. And then, of course, we'll leave it you know, to you to do your own exploring. Uh, let's just go ahead and drag the bloom into the RGB. Eh, let's do it one at a time. We'll be. We'll behave. All right, bloom. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna riff on this a little bit. So I with bloom, I always drag my threshold uh, all the way down unless I have a specific reason for it. I'm gonna turn the ramp glow all the way off. Reason for that is there's this whole kind of underlying RGB gradient that's happening, um, which I guess is why they call it the ramp glow level, the ramp gradient, touch designer terminology. Um, anyway, so I just want like a glow, um, and turning that off just gives me this sort of singular control. So, uh, for this, I think it was, I feel like it was, uh, I feel like it was a red glow. And then maybe it was the RGBA delay that, uh, that got it to look juicy. So, hold on, maybe, oh, I think the intensity was up a little far. All right, let's add in the RGBA delay. And even with the default values, it looks pretty good, but um, I like these settings. It's uh, negative 4, 11, and uh, 17. Maybe. Yeah, that's looking pretty close to where we started. Um, you know what might be happening here? It might be. Might be RG. I might have done this backwards. Oh no no! I'm sorry. I know what what we're missing here. So the last thing we need in the chain after all of this uh, to really complete the look is another display stop. Um, and then we need to take our displace weight down to 0 0.01. I'm sorry, not 0 0.1, 0.01. Now we have our look. There it is. Okay, so we needed that displacement to really, uh, really sell the effect. Okay, that was what was missing. Cool. I thought maybe my uh, RGBA and Bloom uh, were backwards, but this is it. It's the displace. Um, anything else? I think that's it. Uh, stuff to play with, obviously. Uh, you can mess with your blur settings. Um, some nice looks when you mess with the pre-shrink. Remember, it is a reaction diffusion system, uh, just with some extra bells and whistles, so you can get you know different size blobs depending on uh, what you're what you're doing with with your the blurs and your feedback system. Um, of course, if it goes off the rails like that, you can always just pulse it and reset. All right, there it is. Let me get these back to what I said they were in the videos. One and six, one and six. Cool. There it is, uh, the Lake of Acid in all of its psychedelic glory. I will see you guys at the next one.